Yes. Can you tell us more about the CIID program in terms of the teaching and uh, the process that is there? Sure. So CID um, as an institution actually has a consultancy. They also have um, summer school and then they have the one year interaction design program. And uh, they admit uh, a maximum of 24 students a year. Oh, yeah. And it is, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty tight. And they sort of select people from uh, varied backgrounds. So you have people who are, you know, from film, people who are, you know, traditional product designers, but we also had people who were lawyers, people who are government servants who wanted to understand design thinking, the way that like sort of IDEO and, and institutions like that do design thinking. Uh, and we have courses that are broken up into modules, uh, often of one or two weeks in length. So we never spend more than that amount of time really getting to know something. Mm -hmm. And it's always taught by people in the industry. So I learned, for example, I learned Unity from the head of product and UX at Oculus. Um, oh. So it was a really great experience because you don't just learn, you know, you're not two steps behind industry. You're right there at the front lines. And being self-taught, it was always important what everyone out there is doing. It didn't matter so much to me what the theory of the printing press was. It doesn't make sense. It's not useful. It doesn't pay the bills. So I think CID in that way really stands out as a, as a wonderful course. Um, the first part of the year goes into learning. The second part is putting it into practice. And the final part is a three month thesis module where you figure out what you're interested in and you try to make something that is then, uh, that, that you then have to defend in front of a uh, panel of judges. Nice. Can you tell us more about uh, what that kind of process is, your thesis project that uh, when it comes to uh, presenting it to the panel? Sure. Um, so the thesis presentation is a culmination of three months of work from figuring out what exactly you're interested in doing to um, going through the people centered research process to co creating with your users to finally um, putting the design all together and presenting, you know, a finished product or whatever it is that you wanted to get out of it. Um, in fact, you can't really fail. You can't fail because it's never the point. You're not trying to create a perfect object. It's simply a showcase of what you've learned through uh, doing this thesis project, how you applied your learnings from the year to this. So it is a 20 minute presentation accompanied by a demo usually, and then a Q&A with these panelists. Uh, we had uh, Ailey Dixon, who uh, is an alum of, a of CIED, who was on the panel. We had Dan Hill. Um, and we had Jacek Barsikowski, who works with the BBC. And they're all friends of the house. They're all um, uh, very, uh, very um, prolific in their own fields and gave us a lot of great feedback and insight uh, that you know, continues to inform a lot of what I do today. So Dana, like you mentioned, uh, the CID program is very different uh, since, uh, like, like to explain the program, that you guys uh, work on multiple aspects uh, every two weeks. So uh, basically what I'm trying to ask is how is it, how is the program at CIID different from uh, the majority of design college programs? Right. So there is a few things. I would say one is definitely the length and uh, by, um, by extension, the intensity. It's a studio work environment. So you are always working in groups. You're always working in teams. And that's something that they stress very highly because um, according to them, like in mo for most people, when they actually do design out in the real world, they're not going to be like, you know, they're not lone wolves. We yeah. all have to work with the people who bring yeah. our um, designs to life or do that, who actually execute them. And so they prioritize teamwork and group work above a lot of things. Um, another thing is that they... Uh, every Friday we have to present. So everyone who is in the house from the consultancy or um, externals, they come in and we have to get up in front of them and present our work to them because the uh, very strong philosophy at CID is that your work is not useful unless you can communicate it well. You could have done the most amazing project in the world, but if people don't see the value in what you've done, there's very little use it can have. So we had to get comfortable speaking about our work in front of crowds. Um, and maybe the last thing is that it's, um, it's um, partnered with the United Nations and the 
United Nations Sustainability Development Goals is one of the uh, principles that drives a lot of the design that we do. So whenever we have a course, we always have to try to look at things through the lens of sustainability, through the lens of bias, through the lens of um, just trying to create a, like, a better world than what we're currently in through the power of design, rather than looking at it through a strictly commercial lens, which is exactly what I was looking for. Um, because as designers, we have a responsibility for what we put out into the world and to acknowledge that power and try your hardest to make something that's good and that is more positive than negative, I think is um, important, but something that CID really drives home. Right. That's, that's amazing, actually. Like the kind of uh, breadth and depth that's uh, applied that speaks volumes. Yeah, I think that maybe the one thing the misconception that some people have um, is that you're going to get into this course and you're going to become like the most amazing UI UX designer, like the most amazing, most qualified product designer, and that you're going to get a super cool job at like Frog or IDEO or any, you know, insert name of company here. Um, I don't think that CID is going to let you do that. What it allows you to do is get a taste for what the possibilities in each of these fields are. So when I came into CID as a product designer, I don't necessarily feel like my strictly UI UX skills improved as a result of this course. What definitely improved was my ability to communicate and my ability to collaborate and just the general approach that I have. So the skills are awesome. Like to be able to learn Unity and to create VR um, experiences like through my phone was freaking sick. But does that mean that I can get a job you know, at a game development company later? Uh, not necessarily, not yet. But at least I know how to get my foot in the door uh, just in terms of, hey, I'm interested in this. I'll learn more. I'll figure it out. So I hope that no one conflates the two in their heads because that's the thing that a lot of people have been facing. Um, uh, the people who have graduated recently, um, just I thought that being at CID would open a lot more doors than it currently has. It does because the community is cool, but you have to put in the work afterwards. For sure. Gana, what is a typical week for you at CID? Yeah. So on Monday mornings for a one week module, like for example, we learned, um, we learned uh, processing. So processing is, is like um, a language that allows artists to make generative art in a very basic way. And we, we want, that was like our introduction to programming as designers. So that's like a one week module. So on Monday morning, we would have a team breakfast at 9 a.m. And we would uh, meet our instructors for the week. And they're always different, they're always changing. And uh, we would be sort of briefed as to what would happen. And they usually don't tell us what's coming next because they don't want anyone to come in with any preconceived notions of what's going to happen. So you'd come in, you'd have breakfast, you'd meet everybody, and then you'd get the outline for the week. And after you get this outline, you are uh, usually you're split into teams and you're gonna be like, okay, this is gonna be your team for the week. You're gonna have a learning phase and then you're gonna have something that you need to present on Friday. And so through the week, you work in the studio environment. We're usually in by about nine and we, well, I, I, I would like almost sleep there, but, <laughs> but usually we're there until officially five or six um, in the evening. And uh, that would be the case Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then Friday, we would present at around 2 uh, p.m. to internal and external um, people. That's super intense and was super exciting. Can you tell us how uh, someone can apply and be a part of the program at CIID? For sure. So there are things that I think listeners would need to know at this point, which is that the IDP program in Copenhagen is no longer there. Yeah. The thing yeah. is, um, the, <laughs> the Danish government has a quota for a certain... Uh, educational institutions uh, by, by which they can allow international students to come in and that arrangement is no longer valid. So what we do have, fortunately, is the uh, IDP program in Costa Rica where uh, there are lots of Indians, uh, some friends of um, 
people that we know actually oh, who man. are currently in Costa Rica uh, doing the course. Um, I think it's so cool. They get to do biomimicry in the jungle with the amazing Rebecca Mora and she's just great. And um, it's, it's a different experience, but I think an equally valid one and one that's highly informed by sustainability and um, the kind of environment that these students get to learn in. They sort of alternate between being in the city and being in the jungle. It's great. I think it's cool. I would love to visit. <laughs> nice. 